as we emerge from the fog of COVID. The business world is trying to figure out how do we get people back to work and where? But before we architect that shiny new future that we all want to get to, let's pause and realize that we have this giant red reset button in front of us. We have an opportunity to do things differently. Because the people we're trying to bring back to work are not the same as they were before the pandemic started. We've all been through trauma individually and collectively. And sometimes work has been part of that trauma as it has for thousands of years. But we have an opportunity to do things differently. I think work and companies can do way more than just bring us back. They can actually help us heal. You see, 3.5 billion of us, that's how many are in the global workforce, have just been through this wave, this wave of disruption and distraction and division. The division of the left and the right, the haves and the have-nots, this side and that side. And it's left us feeling a bit battered and bruised. The state of the union on our mental well-being is not great. The CDC will tell us that in any given week, about a third of Americans are suffering from the symptoms of anxiety or depression. In a workplace survey, thousands of employees across 17 different industries, it found that 83% of us are feeling emotionally drained. And for me, most disturbing, most alarming, is that in the past 30 days, one in nine Americans have seriously considered taking their own life. One in nine. And while there may not be a vaccine for burnout, there is a simple playbook that companies can use to have work be part of the thing that helps us heal, that helps us move forward. And you might wonder, with all the things going on in the world, what is the role of a company in helping us move forward? Well, companies are already shaping society, shaping individual behavior in a way that governments and religions have been doing for thousands of years. But globally, trust in government is down. And globally, attendance to religious services are down over the past several decades. But the influence of companies continues to grow. And in fact, companies are already shaping society. The question is, is it for good? Now, companies can actually get stuff done. In fact, this is their superpower. If you don't get stuff done, you cease to exist. It's part of the survival DNA of a company. And we can operationalize a big concept and make it happen. So as an example, in a previous role, I was the VP of Global Customer Operations. And my job, along with a thousand other people, was to operationalize this idea of members first, this idea that we really care about our customers. And in a similar way, a company can operationalize a big idea like compassion or mental well-being. They can get stuff done. So here's a simple three-part playbook that any company can use to help us heal. It starts at the top. It starts by deciding and talking about what type of company are we? Are we just in it to make money? Are we here to make the world a better place? And what we really mean is, do we take care of all of our stakeholders as a company, meaning our employees, our customers, and the shareholders? Turns out this shouldn't be that complicated of a business decision because companies who do it, who balance the needs of their customers, their employees, and their shareholders are 14 times more profitable than the S&P average. 14 times. And as an employee working at a company like this, you kind of look around and you say, wow, my company's doing good things. We're making a difference in the world. That means our work matters. It means that my work matters. More importantly, it means my life matters. So a company can help us connect to purpose, to something bigger than ourselves. And work or a company can also help us connect to each other because in a team of people all working towards a common goal, on that team you probably have the left and the right, 
this side and that side, the haves and the have-nots. But when we're all working towards a common goal, we let our differences slide. Because the truth is, we're 98% all the same or similar and 2% different. But the focus on the 2% different is what divides us. But on a team, we work together and those differences can fade and we can begin to heal and connect to each other. And for me, what's most alive personally is that a company can help us connect to that best part of ourselves, can actually help us heal directly. It could be by providing something like counseling services at scale, making it easy for people to get the help that they need. It could be mindfulness programs like workshops on building resilience or growth mindset. It could be meditation sessions where we come together and connect with each other and also connect to something deeper. You know, a lot of companies are offering access to meditation apps like Why Is It Work and Insight Timer and Headspace. And I've seen the power of these. For the last few years at LinkedIn, we've been doing a 30-day mindfulness challenge using these apps. And last year, we got over 100 other companies to join us. And collectively, collectively, we meditated over 30 million minutes. 30 million minutes! Think about that. And I've seen the power, the ROI. Among our employees who use the app, 100 minutes, not that much, 100 minutes over the course of the month, the number of people who said they were totally stressed out and imbalanced, that number went down by 75%. And the number of people who said they had a high degree of calm and they had balance and low stress, that number went up 105%. This works. But, but still, there are people who are doubters. They say, really, should I invest in this? Why should I invest in employee well-being? What does this have to do with work, with business? Well, consider this. Employees as a whole have never had so much influence or power as they have right now in this moment. If we think about the history of work, we started in the agrarian age with kings and slaves, landowners and serfs. We moved to the industrial age, lots of people making the same thing in a factory. And in neither case were workers treated very well or highly valued. But in today's world, in the information age, Many companies don't have hard assets, manufacturing lines, hard goods. They have data. And in this world, the information worker is by far the most important asset that this company has. And so, of course, it makes great business to invest in your most precious asset. And here's another thing. 56% of American workers are currently looking for their next job. My guess is those 56% are going to find a manager, they're going to find a company that will invest in them. I think of my colleague Lisa, and Lisa called one day to thank me for the mindfulness programs we were offering at work. Now, she's a young mom, and she's got three little ones at home, and on the outside looks like she's got it all together. She's doing the best she can. But it's hard. She's cooking, she's cleaning, she's taking care of the kids, she's doing homeschool while daycare is closed during COVID, all the while meeting her number at work. It's a lot. And she said, thank you for these programs because, you know, I'm screaming at my kids a lot less. And she laughed and I laughed and she said it in a way that I knew she was kidding, but not kidding. She went on to say, look, I'm a better version of myself. I'm a better mom. I'm a better partner. I'm better at work. I'm more focused. I'm, I'm a better version of myself. And isn't that where we all are? We're all just trying to get by. We're all trying to be a better version of ourselves. This is not the story of Lisa, but Lisa's story is the story of every one of us. We just want to be a better version of ourselves. And so as we're standing in front of this giant red reset button of work, we can do it differently. We have an opportunity in this chaos of transition to choose. And a company and work itself can be part of the healing that must occur 
for us to move forward. And the giant red button uh, it probably doesn't say easy on the top of it. But it is time that we push it.